anybody out there just can't live without chocolate? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to store it. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen, and today this show is all for me. It's all about chocolate. So in this video, we're gonna talk about um, how long chocolate will store, the best types of chocolate to store, and th the best way to package them for the longest shelf life. And this has been really great research because chocolate has never lasted long <laughs> enough in our home for <laughs> us to even figure this out. So this is great. Okay, it's true. So there was one time many years ago when we had all of our teenagers at home, um, chocolate chips, it was actually Nestle Toll House chocolate chips went on sale for 50 cents a bag. Like, that's a killer deal. So I bought 300 bags of chocolate chips and they didn't even last a year. Like, so you're never gonna find 54 year old chocolate at our house. Um, but I've, I've been able to do some research and explore the best way to store it for the longest period of time. Now, ideal storage conditions are going to be in an airtight container in a temperature, a constant temperature. Right, usually 50 to 60 degrees is ideal. Um, probably a little cooler would be okay, but yeah, there we go. Just nice and cool and dark and dry <laughs> and away from your wife. And away from your wife. Okay, but how many of us really can maintain that, that temperature? And so we're gonna talk just a little bit about that, but with chocolate, there's, there's a difference between an edible shelf life and an ideal shelf life. And the ideal shelf life for milk chocolate is actually only 18 months. But if you get into dark chocolate, you can do it for 24. Now, if you have any chocolate that has nuts in it, like my favorite Snickers or Hershey's with almonds, then you've got about a 12 month shelf life because um, the ingredient which has the lowest short or the shortest shelf life is gonna determine the shelf life of the, of the entire product. And the nuts have a shorter shelf life than, than um, chocolate. So the other thing I wanna talk about really quick is cocoa powder. Cocoa powder has pretty much an indefinite shelf life. Now there have been studies where they've done blind with fresh cocoa and cocoa that was six years old and the participants could tell the difference. However, hold on right there. Ding! Okay, this cocoa is actually in my pantry and it is well over 10 years old because we've lived in this house, what, 12 years? and um, this moved with us. And so again, I had just gotten a really good sale on it and it's been actually stored in the original container and I'm using it on a regular basis and it's still okay, I'm almost out of it. But um, the container makes a big difference. So with cocoa, you've got a much longer shelf life than you do when it's actually turned into a chocolate product. Yeah. Let's start by talking about how I store chocolate chips. Now, this is what we call a gamma seal lid, right? Easy access, because it just spins off. Now here, I've got all kinds of bags, of chocolate chips, and that's what I do. When they go on sale, I just stock up, in fact, these are butterscotch chips, but I just stock up, put them in the original container inside my gamma seal lid bucket, and I stash them away. Now, Not for long though, they disappear pretty quickly. That's the quick seal lid. Now for those of you unacquainted with gamma seal lids, John's just gonna show you what they are. I don't recommend them for all food storage, but things where I'm going to be accessing them on a regular basis, like my chocolate chips, a very regular basis, I keep them in there. Um, when we pour like beans into the bucket in our pantry where we keep our beans, those all have gamma seal lids too. Yeah, so, so uh, to put this on, so you've got the two pieces here, you want to take this lid off so as we're tapping that down, we don't break off the edge of the lid. But this just sits on your bucket and then we'll tap this down in place and it sometimes it's a little bit challenging, but, but we get there. Okay, I think we're there. Almost. Oh, let's. There you go. There. So, 
And then of course the lid just goes on nice and easily. Makes it easy to get to so that she can grab it quick when there's a crisis. <laughs> And that is really important. Now, notice the color selection that I have chosen for these new chocolate chips. And that is bright, so it stands out, so I don't ever lose my bucket of chocolate chips. Um, when, when you're purchasing these, you know, all chocolate chips aren't created equal. We have our favorites, but when you're an addict, um, pretty much you'll settle for anything when you're in crisis. But um, these Ghirardelli's, they come in kind of like a thin Mylar bag. So this package is actually going to be more protectant of the contents than like these that are just the store brand. Um, but quite frankly, I have never had chocolate chips go bad in my storage. And I know it's because I can't store them long, but um, that's, that's part of the reason. So a lot of them, we just put in the bucket, just like this. Now there's two things that can make your chocolate go, well, go bad or decrease the shelf life. One of them, uh, well, it's called bloom. One of them is a heat bloom. And that is when the cocoa butter in there crystallizes and it comes to the surface. If you've ever like let your chocolate get warm and then when it cools off, you see that there's like white stuff on the top of it. That doesn't hurt your chocolate. It's not gonna make it go bad. It actually, when it's heat bloom, doesn't even affect the flavor. But the other kind of bloom is a moisture bloom. And what happens there is if moisture gets into your chocolate, then it changes the sugar and those, the sugar come, um, dis or dissolves, it dissolves the sugar and that comes to the surface and it's kind of got this grayish film on it that will affect the taste of your chocolate. So make sure that you protect it from moisture. It can recover a little bit from the heat, but that moisture, it's gonna affect the taste and chocolate is all about the taste. So we really wanna protect it. That's one of the reasons why storing it in these buckets is a really good idea because you've got your original packaging and then on top of that, you have these buckets that are gonna to help to keep any environmental moisture out. Another way that you can store your chocolate is if you buy them in bulk in these bigger bags. Um, we just got these at Costco, right? Right, yep. Yeah. And they have an expiration date of July of 23, which would be about consistent with that 18 months. Right. So. And these are the semi-sweet, right? Um, but I wasn't quite sure if it's okay to use an oxygen absorber in them. And so I did a little bit of research and I contacted Michelle Lloyd Call. She has a PhD in food sciences and I was super excited because she said what she does is she usually stores them in the freezer. Obviously she does a better job of not being addicted than me, but then she also said that she didn't see any reason why it would not be safe to store them with oxygen absorbers with a nitrogen flush or with um, vacuum seal because they're so low in, low in moisture. And high moisture foods, you're gonna run the risk of botulism, but since these are low in moisture, I think we're gonna be just fine, and she confirmed that. So um, I'm gonna put an oxygen absorber in these bags, and I always keep my oxygen absorbers. I like to buy these. Wallaby's a great place to get them. Um, because they come in these little packs of 10 and we don't want to expose them to air for very long. So I open up the package, stick them in here right away um, so that they're not exposed to air for very long when I use them. And then we're just gonna fill these up. I like to put the oxygen absorber in the bottom because it's just easier, right? And then after I fill it up, if I ever wonder, oh, Kylene, did you forget your oxygen absorber? You can always see it there in the bottom. Now while he's filling that, you could also store them in Mylar bags. For me, I'm a little bit more hesitant to do that just because they don't have that long of a shelf life. Now, I know that we gave you some numbers about the shelf life of chocolate, but I can tell you that I have actually stored it in my basement storeroom for five, ooh, do I get to eat all those? Yes, you get the bonus ones. <laughs> I have actually stored it in my basement storeroom for five years and it's been just fine. I haven't been able to notice a difference and I am a chocolate connoisseur. Like, I, I know my good chocolates. Anyway, um, and so like I said, there hasn't been a problem, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Let's see if I can shake this down. But with the Mylar, with packaging it in Mylar, I'm just a little, 
That's my tablet. I'm just a little bit concerned um, that I'll, I'll like forget it um, because it's not my purple bucket. Um, these are really good. You can see the oxygen absorber in the bottom so you know what you've done. These should poke down really nicely and it shouldn't take them very long to do that. Um, and then I can see what beautiful things I have. For those of you that know, I have these beautiful jar shelves that I usually use. Um, the one bad thing is everybody knows these are chocolate chips. And so if the kids are looking in the bottle room for something fun to eat, I might just lose some of my, my chocolate chips. So you could totally do this. This is a great way to store them. If you buy them in bulk, you could put them in any size jar that you want. The oxygen absorbers that I'm using in here are 300 cc. You really only need a 100 cc, but because I do a lot with oxygen absorbers, I just like to use one kind until it's all gone. And so right now I have these 300, but if it was 400 or 500, I wouldn't have a problem using it. Let's get into storing candy bars, things that have different ingredients beside just chocolate. So first of all, you have to notice this is just so adorable. So back in, I think it was November, if I can tell here, on November 6, 2021, one of my girls was at work and they had candy bars, these packages of candy bars for 10 cents each. How many do you think I told her to get? The whole thing. I said, bring them all home, bring them all home. It was on just one of those really quick flash deals. And um, she was too embarrassed to do it. I wouldn't have been embarrassed. I would have just gone and gotten them. But um, so she brought them home. Now, what do I do with those? Oh, Johnny, save me. So th this bucket is actually a white one. I guess it's not meant to be gotten into. Oh, it is meant to be gotten into. So this bucket... Um, I actually wanted to camouflage this and hide it from everybody in the house so that it would last. Um, there was actually a second bucket, but that no longer exists. Um, As we would expect. And all we did here was we put the, okay, so originally the dark chocolate was in this bag inside of here. And there are a few that have nuts on the very top, but this whole thing is just, chocolate bars, right? And we're protecting it from the outside moisture, right? Now, think about this bag that we just, this is what was left over, right? Could moisture get in this bag and cause a moisture bloom? It actually could, right? That's, so it's not in an airtight thing. So I'll just have to eat all of that bag really quickly or put it in another jar. But What a sacrifice. <laughs> this is a great way to store chocolate. Remember the whole almonds or the ones with almonds aren't gonna store as long. With these Snickers, I can tell you what happens to the Snickers because I actually didn't rotate them in my um, survival kit one time and the caramel that's inside them gets like rock hard. Um, and then the peanuts will go a little bit rancid because nuts tend to go rancid in time. So this isn't a good storage item. This is one that you just really want to go ahead and enjoy and you know, it'll make it easily to that 12 month mark. But the candy bars in here, well, not the ones with the nuts, but the other candy bars, quite frankly, I would expect them to last four or five years in storage, at least, if I could stay out of them. Yeah. So they probably need to be hidden, right? Hidden just a little bit. But this is just a great way. It doesn't cost much money. We are not repackaging anything. This bucket is used over and over again. And I think it's super adorable because not only, like the date is written kind of, um, Backwards, kind of like what you would use when you're doing family history or something. It's 2021, 11, 06. And then down here, the time is 8, 11. I think that's really cute. <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> that's right, Kurt. Gotcha. No, okay. Hey, grandkids love to help me, and then they know it's down there. But, you know, when you listen or smell. Hmm. You can totally smell the chocolate, which means if you can smell it, that means the air is getting in there. Right. Okay, one more thing. So hang on, one more thing we gotta talk about. When it comes to cocoa powder, that's what's really going to give you your longest shelf life, right? It has that indefinite shelf life. Um, and but it's not as readily edible, so yeah, I have that, to, that contributes. I have to work on it to make it edible, right? But it makes some fantastic things. Um, this one in this container, I'm not a fan of this container. It's like a cardboard container that you can tell it 
it's just not good for long-term storage. But the best buy date on it is 2026. So that's still pretty far out there. If I bought it in this container, I wouldn't just put it on the shelf, um, unless I was gonna use it within a year or two. If it's a couple years, oh yeah, put it on the shelf. But these that are a little bit, this thicker plastic that the Hershey's comes in, we get the Hershey's from Costco a lot like this. I'll just stick it on the shelf and it will last and it, it does a really good job. Um, this one, it's still the plastic, it probably would. It just doesn't feel quite as, as strong. And, and like I said, this one, um, it's a harder plastic, or not plastic, but it's a harder cardboard and they don't make them like that now. And then it's got the, the tin on the bottom and, and it lasted just fine. This is a plastic bag um, and I think I a year or two, I'd leave it on the shelf, but anything longer than that, I'm gonna repackage it. And what I would do is I would just, this would be great in Mylar. In fact, um, I would take this bag and I would open up the Mylar and I would stick it inside here. I'd make a little tiny slit in here, slide an oxygen absorber right down in here. And then, oops, and then I would heat seal this, right? And then what I've just done is the oxygen absorber is gonna help to extend the life of the cocoa powder. And um, then it's gonna be protected from moisture and all kinds of things. So this, I would seriously be okay with it. I don't know, in a cool, dry, dark basement, maybe 10, 20 years. But remember that taste test did say that after six years they could tell a difference. But I think if you store it right, that will really help. So for long-term food storage, this is the way you gotta go, right? To get your chocolate, you're gonna have to just do it like this. For shorter term food storage, and when I say shorter term, I'm talking about, well, officially they, you know, they say a year and a half, but um, I would say five years or more, you could store the chocolate like this. If it's cool, if you live in Arizona and you put it in your garage, you're gonna have a lot of heat bloom going on. But, um, so I, I, you know, all bets are off if it's hot, but in a really cool, dry basement, because the temperature's supposed to be 50 to 60 degrees, which maybe is cool. a little cooler if you can. And um, Michelle stores hers in the freezer. I just have too many other things in my freezer to be able to do that. So did that help? Are you all gonna go out and buy chocolate? Oh, the one thing that we, did talk, we didn't talk about was how much do you need to store? Okay, how I, much? I, I don't think how we much? need very much. I mean like, you know, maybe a half a cup per person per year, something like that. How ugly would that be? That would be really ugly. Would be Never mind. Really ugly. Okay, so I know that people talk about bartering with a lot of different stuff, but let me tell you, um, if I'm out of chocolate, there are a lot of things that I would be willing to trade for chocolate. So if you have me, if, if no, I'd never oh. trade you. I'd never trade oh. you. But if you happen to have a jar like this of chocolate. I swear I would give you bushels and bushels of some of my garden produce for kale. Just some chocolate. Kale. Kale. Yeah. I did have a dear friend that traded me kale for it one time. I was so excited. But um, it all depends on how much you eat it. But I would have no problem storing extra to barter of chocolate because there are enough addicts out there like me that would pay dearly for some extra chocolate. And right now, you might not be able to get flour, but you can get chocolate. <laughs> so now, for the question of the day. How much chocolate are you gonna store? And where are you gonna store it? Just in case I get desperate and need to come looking. Is it in a purple bucket? <laughs> Comment below. And, and thanks, thanks for being part of the solution.